Hello, children. Welcome to Quarantine Corner with Steph, where we talk about cross stitch and pretend that we're all sane. We pretend like we don't sometimes jump into the car and drive off into the country for no discernible reason other than you have to get out of the house and if you have to look at your own family for five more minutes, you might go crazy. Or is it just me? My name is Stephanie. I design cross stitch patterns. You can find my stuff at lindystitches.com. Today, we're going to pretend like life is normal and I'm going to talk to you about the wonderful projects I've been working on and I'm going to show you some great new releases from Lindy Stitches that I think you're going to love, including my May Bird Sampler. It's going to be great. First up, inspired by the strange times in which we live, I randomly released this PDF into my store. It is only $5 and it's been selling like hotcakes, I guess because people feel the same way I do. Inspired by yet another dissatisfying Zoom meeting where I just ended up missing real people more. This is called Quarantine Valentine and it says, my real face misses your real face because I miss real people a serious amount. It was a super quick little stitch that you could send to anybody whose real face your real face misses. I just finished it into a sweet little pillow using some Chianti chenille trim from lady.creates and if you don't know how to deal with chenille <laughs> if you don't know how to deal with chenille check out my latest video where i showed you how i finished this pillow and did i bother to cut off the obnoxiously long ends no i did not because sometimes it takes an obnoxious amount of motivation to do small things. Or I just slapped it on a shelf and said, whatever. Okay, next up is cut your thistles. This is the second weather proverb from my weather proverb series. This was the first, this is three snows on a robin's tail, then spring. So that's uh, early spring slash winter. And then here's the summer edition. Cut your thistles before St. John, or you will have two instead of one. If you don't know when St. John is, which I never have and probably never will, it's right here for your convenience, June 24th. So if you've done gardening and you know how thistles work, or mint, which is beside the point. Here's a tribute. These flosses were super fun to stitch with. Really bright. It has bees. It's cute. Cut your thistles. And now, without further ado, I would like to talk about my 2020 bird sampler. So for the last three years, I have released a sampler with an awesome quote, an awesome border, and birds in May. And they've all been <laughs> smash hits. And I love them because they are, I kind of just let myself go a little wild um, with colors and whatever quote I think really strikes a chord in me. So let's review very quickly. In 2018, I released my first May bird sampler and this will probably always be one of my favorite patterns I've ever written until death do us part. Um, this holds a special place for me. This is my birds to the boughs and it was the first time that I just kind of went berserk 
<laughs> I don't, maybe that's not the right word for it. I just kind of exploded with whatever I wanted to do. So this is a line of poetry that I received permission to use. And uh, nameless birds that just have fancy tails. And I just think it's wonderful. Honestly, my favorite thing about being a cross-stitch designer is when someone stitches this for their spouse and also I know of a few widows who have messaged me and said they stitched it as a tribute to their lost husband and that is sad but it is also one of the most touching things. No words. Um, so birds to the boughs. Last year, so last year in 2019, last year in 2019, I released Stars Bright, and it features a pair of kestrels, an Ernest Hemingway quote about how lovely it is to be together in bed reading books with the stars bright, and it's just precious. It has a granny square border and it goes nuts with colors. It's really fun and I love it. And in between this year, <laughs> uh, 2019 and 2020, on one of my posts someone just made a friendly comment saying, I wish that these were singles friendly because I'd love to stitch them but I'm single. And <laughs> It really struck a chord with me because I hadn't even thought about that. You know, you live in your own perspective probably way too much. I live in my own environment and like it didn't even occur to me. And so it's like, you know what, that's right. Like I can't just be talking about married love and riding off into the sunset. That's not everyone's life. And so this year's sampler is singles friendly and I love it so much. So this, the first inspiration for this piece came from an Instagram poet who I reached out to immediately after seeing this post. I will post a screenshot of it right up here on the screen. As soon as I read that, I was like, that has to be charted yesterday. So I reached out to him. He was very kind and generous. I don't know hardly anything about him, but he had said that other people have done tribute things with his poetry and he was very open to it. His name is Brent and I hope you'll go give him a follow because he has a lot of great, beautiful words put together on his account. And of course I follow all sorts of bird accounts on Instagram and I have, you know, roughly 450 species that I'd like to pay tribute to. For whatever reason this year I picked the female crimson chat. She's so cute. She has a brown head and lives in Australia, I believe. Has like a russet kind of face, little patch above her bill and then brown I'll just show you the piece. It's called Beautiful Things. And I'm in love. Oh my darling, it's true. Beautiful things have dents and scratches too. And so this is the female crimson chat. She has this like so sweet. She has like speckles and oh, she's so cute. So the urn is broken and leaking dirt and also these are weeds <laughs> has weeds growing out of it uh i run past some like really old historical fences on the main street of town we have some pretty old homes that you run by and they are looking rough but they are still beautiful and so i wanted to do like an iron fence that was broken down which would be re annoying and repetitive if it wasn't all broken because you'd never stitch the same thing twice. So this is stitched on 36 count earthen by Picture This Plus. It's a linen and it does fit in a 
standard size United States frame. Uh, it fits in a 14 by 11, which a lot of my samplers fit in. Um, this isn't a 14 by 11 frame. This is something I had in the garage and I have a weak spot for gold because I feel like it just gives life and it makes things feel extra fancy. So yes, you could easily frame this yourself. It uses DMC and a selection of classic color works. I'm going to try to hold them up. So <laughs> here's the flosses. I can't hold everything at the same time. A lot of these would be are very easily duplicated in DMC, so I think the sampler would look great in DMC. But it does have some of my favorite classic Colorworks colors, like Candy Yams. I think the funnest, is funnest a word? The funnest color that I included is Timber, and this is what the fence is stitched in. And you can see that that is two totally different colors. It's a really dark brown and a green. And you can see it just gives a cool effect. And I was even thinking about making like a stitching with overdyed flosses video because you can see I did different things on the tops of these railings. This one I obviously stitched in stripes. This one I went up and down trying to give it some dimension. I just think it's really fun and interesting when you play with such a variegated floss. And then you can also see the urn kind of has a distinct two different colors. So this part, I stitched this way, then I stitched this way, and then I tried to kind of make the angles of the urn, and then the top I stitched back and forth. So it's just fun to play around, and <laughs> I love it. I hope you love it too. Um, I just think it's a truth about life. Um, there's very few things that are perfect, and sometimes the well-loved things are the most beautiful. So, that's beautiful things. Lots of your LNSs already have it, so if you'd like a copy, um, contact your local shop owner. Or you can visit my Etsy shop down below. So Beautiful Things was behind me in the last two videos that I made where I was sitting and talking here in this room and I just meant it as a sort of surprise or teaser for the extra observant. I didn't mean to drive anyone crazy. However, I did get a lot of messages of what is this? I'm trying to find this. One lady was like, I stayed up into the wee hours of the night googling trying to find that pattern. <laughs> I'm sorry if I drove you crazy. I. I really was just like, hmm, like, here's a treat, here's a preview, I might do that again, so if, if you're like, I've never seen that before, I'm just giving you a little, I don't know what that is, but that's what I was doing. Thanks for your response to Stitch, Stitch Sania, so many of you were like, that's what I want to do, which is cool, super cool. So we're going to have some fun in May. If you don't have a plan for May or you want to have some extra fun, um, look at Stitch Mania or Stitch Sania videos across FlossTube or on Instagram. Look at the posts of what things people are up to in May. It's a fun month for everybody. We all get excited about new things and old things, and I, I can't wait. I've been chomping at the bit. I've really wanted to start something new. But I am a sucker for delayed gratification. I know I can start something new, but I like to make things special. And so I've been forcing myself to work on my whips, which I will show you now. Let's start with Templar Prophecy, which I haven't shown you in quite a bit. I forgot to show it to you in one of my last whip updates. And so Templar's Prophecy is by Long Dog Samplers. This is what it's going to look like. I'm doing just a little modification 
and taking the side border off so it'll fit on my fabric. I'm having a lot of fun with this one. Now the the hard part I think about long dog samplers is colors. If you are going full monochromatic, meaning you are only stitching with one color of floss, there's nothing to think about. You just stitch away. But if, if you want to be complicated and put pops of color in, it can be a bit of a challenge to know where you're going and what you're doing. So since you last saw it, I have put more colors into my piece. I'm stitching it two over two on picture this plus fog 36 count and I think it's looking fantastic you can see I have a dragon and I have my unicorns and so here's my hanger of floss I am stitching this with primarily silks for you PR 124 which always like turns out looking fluorescent in my camera, but it's really not. So that's the floss color I'm using. And then I'm, I'm, I'm trying to add other colors in as I go. So these, I keep calling them chocolate horses in my head, but they're unicorns. These are the new DMC color 04 which I love. It's like this brown that has a purple undertone. It's really lovely. And then I did this rabbit's little rabbit hole. <laughs> and the rabbit is $37.99. And then I, I really thought it was going to go with a dark blue or a dark green for my first dragon. However, this is going to go in my husband's study. And Already with the main floss color, I feel like it's a little, I don't want to say, I don't mean feminine, but it's already a little like, woo, I'll, you know, I don't know. I wanted it to look a little bit traditional, historical, and I've already leaped out into the great yonder with my main silk floss color. And so I just felt like if I was going to go blue or green, it's just going to turn into some fantasy piece that I, I'm not doing well with the words. So I ended up going dark, $37.99, and I think he looks great. And where it's going to go from here, I have no idea. But, um, yeah, my camera definitely <laughs> makes it look even wilder than it does in person. But there's Templar's Prophecy. Next up is my Walk Fast Sampler. I designed this pattern in 2017. I never stitched it. I just designed it digitally. And it is a quote from Rose Nyland from the Golden Girls. You can lead a herring to water, but you have to walk fast or he'll die. I decided I wanted to stitch this not only just to have it on my wall because it's going to look amazing. Look at that fish. Uh, not only to have it on my wall, but I want to have some fun with some classic color works and some linen and, you know, jazz it up. And then when I'm done, I'm going to re-release the pattern. You know, take an actual model photo, do some tweaks on the pattern, give you some classic color works alternatives to the DMC. And so if you've already purchased this pattern, you will be able to get that update once I'm done. But he's looking great. So I finished my fish. Doesn't he look spectacular? <gasps> uh, I finished the bottom text, the graveyard, the tree, the walkie dude, and the leash and the hand. And it looks fantastic. And so, yeah, I really want to get this done pretty quickly. This is my PVC lap stand, and it's in my shop. If you're interested in trying a lap stand and you don't want to spend 
Buku box. Um, my husband made this for me, and so he just said, hey, do you think people will be interested in it? They'd actually want to buy one, and I said, I don't know, let's just see, and then we sold out twice. I've shown it a couple times. It's just made out of PVC pipe and fittings and Q-snap clips, and you can find tutorials on YouTube for how to build your own. But if you would rather not build your own and cut your own, there are some in my shop. So that's my Walk Fast sampler. I'm stitching it on 32 count Regency linen by Pictureless Plus, and I love it. I also did a little beading on my Chatelaine just to catch it up to a level where I thought I could definitely finish it in Mania during Mysania. I talked about my plan um, in my Sania video, but it's hard to even see the beads when you're talking about a camera. So basically for Sania, this is on my scroll rod so you can't see the whole thing, I have one, two, three, four sections left. And so each week I'm going to complete a section of beading, but all this is complete. The center is going to be the the center is going to be the most bead heavy part. So maybe I will attack that first when I feel most ambitious. But the beads are really really pretty and unfortunately cameras are really notoriously bad. At showing beads but I do plan on I can flip it this way <laughs> you can see the other side I do plan on making like a Chatelaine wrap-up video of everything that I've learned working on this piece and um, what I think about stitching Chatelaines because it turns out I have a lot of thoughts go figure so that's all caught up for Sania, and I'm excited to have that one done. I also went a little bit hog wild on Red Troublemakers because <laughs> all my other stitching right now is motif stitching, and I needed some confetti. I think I mentioned that before. I, I need more pieces with color changes, and so I spent a significant amount of time on this. <laughs> it's probably not going to look like it because it's full coverage but I'm pretty proud of my progress. I think it looks great. So I did, I'm working on this diagonally and neighbor with a loud truck is driving by. I did like a couple diagonals, which probably was something close to like 1800 stitches. I really wanted to do this whole thing diagonally but the bigger it gets, the more threads I have parked and they're kind of getting a bit much. And you can see that I'm not even that far. Like it's not gonna get smaller anytime soon. So I'm not sure. I'm not really sure what to do about that. But I, I like working diagonally. It makes sense to my brain. So that's looking good. So just a few random pieces of news and then I'm going to show you my haul. First of all, I'd like to give a shout out to a fellow floss tuber that I am really, really enjoying. Her handle is xstitchmd. I will put it down below. Her videos are awesome. She's a prolific stitcher. She has some great, awesome projects and I just really enjoy her personality and she Stitches beautiful sampler. She's super into Quakers and I think she's fantastic. Go give her a watch. There is a stitch along going on for Mary Mary, day version or night version. If you have not seen, oh, what's her name? I'm not going to remember her name. I'll put it on the screen. This wonderful person is doing the day version and the night version split down the middle. It looks amazing. You gotta go check her out either on Instagram or go join my Lindy Stitchers Facebook group. 
it's a fun place to be. I had my giveaway of all the Teresa Kogut patterns. They all went out except for one. So Sarah, Pate, Danielle, you won Bunny and B, and I contacted you, haven't heard from you. Give me a buzz. My email address is down below. Okay, stash acquisitions. Only three things. First of all, Amanda May, my ex school friend, she released a pattern she said was inspired by my vintage bird craze that I talked about in my Stitch Sania video. I have, you know, just quirky vintage bird patterns that I would like to stitch, and she <laughs> decided to go chart a guinea fowl and she shared the pattern with me and I think it's perfectly wonderful. So her design name is Ardith Design Guinea Fowl. I will link her channel down below. It's adorable and obviously I'm all over starting this perhaps in Stitch Sania. Isn't it great? Look at this. Look at the legs! Birds look great in cross stitch. Okay, Lori at Not Forgotten Farm was, I don't know if she's still having a sale, but she put everything on sale and you know I had to go buy the turkey pattern that she released this last fall called Indian Summer. Terrible picture, but adorable pattern. This one is going in my to be started during dark October stitching. I know this is technically dark October. My dark October includes turkeys. Last piece of haul was inspired by an Instagram account that I absolutely love. Probably a lot of you follow her. I'll put her handle down below, Susie Zoo, I do believe. She stitches a lot of the things that I love, and a lot of times she stitches like vintage stuff. And she posted a picture from this old book. I ended up getting two books from this author. Her name is Jana Hosschild Lindbergh. Super vintage book. I will not do a flip through. But she stitched this. Now, a lot of the stuff in this book is very vintage. Even this, I would probably not pause and think, wow, how cute is that? But stitched up, it's adorable. And so it was worth, I think I paid $3 for this book. It was worth it. And there's a couple other cute things in this book. More cute things in this one. I love animals. I know that's probably abundantly obvious. This one is just full of animals. Let's do a flip through fast forward style, shall we? Old funky cows. Cool Japanese geese. Fractor Polish birds. Moo. Ginger Gerald Squirrel. A very concerned cat. More cat. More cat. Chonky cat. Kangaroo. Birds. There's just tons of birds. I am not going to show you all the birds. A lapwing. What's a lapwing? Never heard of one. A lapwing? Do you have lapwings? Tell me about it. Penguins! Butterfly. Whew, there's a lot of stuff in that book. I probably only showed you half of it. There's also bugs and fish and all sorts of things. And so that was worth four dollars. So that was all the things that I purchased since I talked to you last. 
Don't forget that if you start a Lindy Stitches project in the month of May, no matter what kind of plan or fun you are having, don't forget to share it on Instagram using the hashtag down below because I'm going to be pulling from that hashtag to give away an Etsy gift card. So just a heads up. If you want to put some Lindy Stitches in your Stitch Mania or Sania plans, don't forget. Let's talk about a couple things that I'm into, then I'm going to read you a poem and bid you adieu until we get into May. I'm so excited about May. Things I'm all into. Okay, can we just pause? Pause, because the last list of things I was all into included the Cat Dancer, which is a $2 cat toy off Amazon.com. And can I just say, if I can't leave the house, and I can't be with my friends and my family. And I'm going a little bit crazy every now and then. You sending me videos of your cats experiencing the cat dancer for the first time. Drop the mic. Thank you. Thank you. You all know who you are. touched my heart. What I'm all into. I am in love with a new phone app called BirdNet. This is by Cornell University, who is one of the leading ornithology, ornithological, ornithology studying universities in the United States. Here's what the app looks like. I have an Android, not sure if it's compatible or whatever, but here's what it does. The minute you flip it open, it starts recording sound, the sound around you, and you can see all the, you know, sound wigglies, and you can just take your finger and select the little wiggly. You can see where all the little wigglies are. You can tell I'm not a scientist. Uh, you just select the little part where you heard that bird and you wanna know what bird it is. And then you click analyze and the app will tell you what bird you're hearing, which is so fun because when you're out and about and you wanna know what birds are tweeting in the trees, now you can figure it out. Not only can you figure it out, but you start to learn the sounds of the birds. And I've only been using this app for like a month, but now I can go on a walk and I know what a robin sounds like. I know what a cardinal sounds like. I know what a red-bellied woodpecker sounds like. I know what a song sparrow sounds like because I've figured it out. It's so hard to figure. I don't, I've never been able to memorize the bird sounds and now I know. Not, not all of them, but I'm slowly expanding my bird vocabulary and it's easy and it's fun. Try it out. Second thing I'm all into, Passenger, one of my favorite musicians, live streams every Sunday and I just sit in my chair and melt. The last thing I'm all into is reading African American literature, uh, specifically by women. And so I'm not going to do book reviews because I am not good about talking about books and I've just come to accept that about myself. Uh, earlier this year, I read my first Toni Morrison. I think it's sad that it took me so long to read Toni Morrison. I don't know what my hesitation was, but I read Beloved and it blew my socks off. I was stunned by her use of literature use of literature did I just not prove my point <laughs> stunned by her use of language she is an eloquent writer and um yeah I read The Color Purple by Alice Walker I also read The Hate You Give and I cannot remember the name of the author so I will put it down below and then last but not least, I'm reading this book to my teenagers. It's called Stamped Racism, Anti-Racism, and You by Jason Reynolds and Ibram X. Kendi. And I don't, I didn't mean to actually get into that theme of reading. It just kind of happened and I think I might stick with it. 
So last but not least, let's read the poem. The poem I chose today is from Good Poems for Hard Times by Garrison Keillor, and it's not a happy poem. It's sort of happy. It's about how you feel when unexpected things happen and your life maybe isn't as fantastic as you thought it was going to be, but it's still your life. It really struck me as relevant to the times that we're in. It's called Riveted by Robin Sarah. It is possible that things will not get better than they are now or have been known to be. It is possible that we are past the middle now. It is possible that we have crossed the great water without knowing it and stand now on the other side. Yes, I think we have crossed it. Now we are being given tickets and they are not tickets to the show we had been thinking of, but to a different show, clearly inferior. Check again. It is our name on the envelope. The tickets are to that other show. It is possible that we will walk out of the darkened hall without waiting for the last act. People do. Some people do. But it is probable that we will stay seated in our narrow seats all through the tedious denouement to the unsurprising end, riveted, as it were, spellbound by our own imperfect lives because they are lives and because they are ours. Spellbound by our own imperfect lives. Oh my darling, it's true. Beautiful things are cracked and broken too. I hope that in spite of your cracked and broken circumstances, you are finding joy. Thank you for spending time with me. You can find me everywhere as Lindy Stitches. I will see you in a bit, friends. Bye.